This is NBA Unplugged, brought to you by TheProBasketballTalk.com. It's time to talk hoops with Jacob Noble and James Buckland. I'm being pointed to, I think we do have them, but uh, there's been some lack of communication here between the two. I don't know. There's some some going on with the phone. So, uh, but anyway, we, we're gonna get Ryan Allen on the line, and uh, I don't know if we've even mentioned this yet, uh, but he is actually Tony Allen's brother, and uh, so that's another thing we're gonna be able to talk to him about. Uh, I hear he's also pretty close with Derrick Rose from his short time with the Chicago Bulls, so he probably knows a lot about his game, and he's been in the news. So we're probably gonna be able to learn a lot here from Ryan Allen. Ryan, are you with us? Hello. Ryan, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Oh, thank you for joining us so much today, Ryan. We had a little technical difficulties there, but uh, we we know your time is precious, so we'll uh, jump right into this. And uh, you're you're one of the players that have been in the summer league before, and you came back this year. And kind of just describe what a typical day in the summer league is for a player, from a player's perspective. You know what your daily routine is. Uh, well, with the Bulls, they're pretty uh pretty tight organization, so. I mean, every, they try to model summer league as much as much as they can to the season. So, I mean, a game day will be we wake up, to watch film, uh, uh, gear pick up, then there's a shoot around, kind of walk through to go over the other teams, personnel and stuff like that. Then you eat, then rest, and then it's getting ready for the game. So, like I said, it's pretty much the same as, as if you would in the regular season for a regular game. So... Yeah, and uh, and it is there is a lot to be gained in these summer league games because uh, and and one thing me and Jacob were just talking about it's not just uh, you know the the scouts from the team that you're playing on in the summer league but every team is watching you uh, it's a great place to, to showcase your talent to all the teams uh, you know how did how did this year go for you and, and and how much do you think you gained from it? Uh, this year was just a learning experience. Uh... I didn't play as much as I liked, but being around other pros and uh, guys that played professionally was a definitely a great learning experience. And, and getting taken in the coaching from Tibbs and, you know, the head coach and, and all the coaches around. So, like I said, it was a learning experience, listen, getting soaking in everything I can from those people. Now, th- this next few uh, weeks and months is, is going to be interesting for players that, you know, are in your stature. You went to the Summer League. Um, are you in talks with any NBA teams for camp invites? Um, do you expect to play in the NBA? I know you're trying to get back there. You were there once. Um, you know, like, like a lot of young players, you're fighting for those spots. Um, so have you spoke to any teams about any training camp invites, and what are your expectations for the upcoming season for yourself? Uh, well, my plan is I, I'm looking forward to uh... – going overseas so I can build me a resume so I can be a little more attractive to the NBA teams. But I'm not really too excited about a training camp invite because I did that last year and I got cut the very last day. So, oh. you know, it was a lot of hard work and it's just like at the last minute it's, it's all for nothing. So, like I said, and that was a good experience, but, you know, you make it that close and you get cut, it's kind of kind of let down. So, I'm not too excited about a training camp invite unless I'm for sure about it. So I want to, I'm looking forward to heading another season uh, and building my resume and, and coming back at it again next year. Yeah, understandable. I'm sure, I'm sure you're ready to get onto a court where you can actually play a lot of minutes, compete against great talent, and it, you talk about going overseas, and that's a good place to do it because as the NBA expands, as basketball becomes even more and more popular, it's now the second most popular sport in the entire world, uh, right behind soccer, and I'm sure it'll take that one spot pretty soon. Uh, what you, have you played overseas before or against that type of talent? And uh, what are you expecting out there? Uh, I said I play like I said, players I played at the, the highest level you can play. So I'm pretty sure it's pretty intense overseas. But and I did play overseas uh, a few games with my college team. We went to uh, Italy and played four games. Oh, nice. And I mean that's pretty physical, but there's nothing like the NBA. So I can say it'd be a, a resume builder for me. Mhm. Mm-hmm. Now, um, a little fun with this question because obviously you don't ultimately get to choose which team you want to play for. You know, it's up to the teams to make the offers. Um, what teams are offering you contracts in, in terms of which countries? And if you had to choose between which country you'd like to go play in, um, in, in a perfect destination for yourself, which country would you pick? 
Uh, I've heard a lot of great stories about Israel, and uh, uh, they say it's pretty, pretty and Maccabi is pretty similar to um, the United States, uh, Miami. So Israel would be a perfect place when I heard, and they pay well and they pay on time. So sometimes you go overseas, <laughs> you get you get issues with teams paying the money. So yeah. Israel, I heard a lot of great stories about. So hopefully that's somewhere I can get some work out of. Yeah, Jacob, you're Jewish, so have you, have I, you been I, to Israel? I, I've been to Israel, and it's gorgeous out there, and I, and I agree with you. Even Tel Aviv is gorgeous. Um, you know, you got the white yeah, sandy yeah. beaches, the blue ocean on the Mediterranean, it, and you don't feel like you're in Europe when you're over there. So, yeah, I've been there. Uh, I've been up and down Israel. Obviously, you got the culture side, but the cities, you know, you wouldn't know that you were sitting in the Middle East. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get so that's, that's definitely a goal for me to get something done there. Yeah, and I want to go back in time a little bit with you here. Uh, let's jump in the DeLorean. And uh, what was it like growing up? Uh, you're, you're, of course, the brother of Tony Allen, who's in the NBA. He's a terrific defender. How much, because I'm sure you guys have played a lot of one-on-one against each other, because he's, you know, obviously one of the better lockdown defenders in the NBA. How much did that help your game coming up, uh, getting to play against that type of player all the time? Uh, it just built a lot of toughness. We got into a lot of fights. <laughs> I mean, when you grow up, grow up in Chicago, grow up in Chicago, period. You just gotta have that toughness because guys are gonna try you, and if they see any weakness, they're gonna attack those weaknesses. So, and my brother was that. Like, if he was weak, he was gonna attack. So, mm. I had to stay strong and stand tough. So, being tough is the, the biggest thing I got from that. <laughs> he, yeah. He's he's quite the character, you know. He, he's he's. A media's wet dream. We love listening to him talk. He's always entertaining and fun. Um, and, and your mother said that you guys are, you know, kind of polar opposites in terms of personality. You're more laid back, easy going. He's kind of upbeat, always, you know, up for something. But uh, we're from the Boston area, for, uh, and this is where we grew up. So we, we followed Tony from a young age. And one of the inside jokes oh. up here is <laughs> after a game that he had, um, Greg Dickerson, which is a Comcast Sportsnet analyst, he said he asked Tony what he had before the game, and Tony said salmon and mashed potatoes um, was his pregame uh-huh. meal. <laughs> I'm sure you all remember that. Yeah. Uh, so I definitely if, remember that. <laughs> now, what is your favorite pregame meal? Uh, well, it's kind of weird. I mean, it's my big brother. I was younger watching that, watching those interviews. I think that was, that game was after Denver, I believe. Yeah, like you points. got a better memory than I do. <laughs> Yeah, it was, it was against Denver. He had like 30 points, and I watched that interview, and he, ever since he said Sam and the Magic that was it. That's what I tried to come out of my uh, after. Oh, man. There you go. Sam and the Magic Potatoes. I love it. Uh, and we also yeah. hear that you're also pretty close with Derrick Rose from your, your days with the Chicago Bulls, and recently he said, they asked him, you know, who's the greatest player in the NBA right now? He said myself. Uh, I'm sure you're pretty familiar with his game. Uh, do you agree or disagree with that? Well, I, I'm watching him. I've watched him, and I've seen. I'm seeing him now put the work in, and he he solely based that answer off the work that he's putting in. It, it wasn't cocky. It wasn't over the top. It was just that he feels he's the hardest working NBA, and he got the right to say that, as he should. And you know, um, Ryan, I actually have to back you up here. I was in Dallas for the game against the Bulls, and you know, the perks of having a credential is you get to sit on the court sideline and watching, you know, the guys work out before the game. And he was the first one there, and he was the last one to leave. And obviously, he could be the last one to leave because he didn't really have to get ready. But you know, other players probably would have just walked off when more fans and people started coming down. But no, he sat out there, and obviously, you know, the the much scrutinized, you know, windmill jams he's throwing in the in you know, pregame that fans are like, why isn't this guy playing? And I, and I agree, he shouldn't play, you know. He should rest his injury because he came back early the first time and we saw what happened. But um, but transition to the Bulls coaching staff for a second because we, we kind of touched on it early on. Um, as you know, we know Tom Thibodeau pretty well. He's an assistant here in Boston for a long time. Orchestrated is probably the best defense I've seen since the Pistons, um, in, in, especially in this area a long time since we had a decent team that played defense. Uh, talk to us a little bit about what the coaching staff does that makes them so good at coaching defense in terms of like other teams around the league who don't even seem to practice defense at all. Uh, uh, Attention to detail, like they really, uh, when, it, when it's time to, to, to practice, like everybody is focused in. So it's no playing around. It's just hand, it's hands on. Everything is step by step. Like, you know what I mean? Everybody's on the string defensively. And 
when you, if you can't defend, if you're messing up on defense, that's where you, you messed up the most. So it's really like the top of the line, the things you could do right or wrong. So everybody take pride in defense, even the coaches, everybody in the building. So that's really it. They just focus in on it a lot. Yeah, it's a good mentality to have if you want to win. And uh, I, I want to learn some more about your game here. So uh, if you could, uh, what, what, what other NBA player, past or present, would you compare your game to and, and why? Uh, well, of course my brother, but I think I'm a little, I think offensively I'm a little more inclined to him. So I would say Avery Brown. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, so I, mean, I, I can defend, kind of athletic, you know, just can play multiple positions, one, two maybe. Like I said, Avery Brown would be somebody I, I, uh, I can pad my game up. Or, or even Patrick Beverly. I got to okay. defend. I get try to try to make bring energy to just make a difference on the defensive end. And not you know, I'm not really gonna go out there and give you, you know, thirty, twenty five points, you know, I'm just gonna give my points wherever I can, but for the most part I'm gonna try my best to to just defensively do everything I can. You know, Ryan, there's not enough players like that in the league. And Jacob and, loves David yeah, Bradley. Yeah, I was going to get to this. My two, my two, two of my three favorite players that aren't really stars, well, I guess one of them is a star now, and that's Al Jefferson, but my two favorite players growing up was Tony and Avery Bradley, and I just love defensive players. It's just the strategy I like to, you know, the way I like to approach the game of basketball. And you don't you don't know how often I had to defend your brother up here. <laughs> Everyone hated me for liking Tony Allen, and I stuck by him to the very end. And now he's gone, and they miss him up here. So it's kind of kind of funny. But uh, we got a few minutes left with you here, and we want to bring up some fun questions. Have some fun. Yeah, some fun questions with you. Get a little lighthearted here. And James and I had a podcast last week where we had a summer themed episode. And if you had to play a five man volleyball team. Including yourself as a player, which other four NBA players, past or present, would you want on your volleyball team? <laughs> uh, is myself and four other players? Yep, yourself yep. and four players. Uh, Blake Griffin. Ooh, great. DeAndre Jordan. Uh, Derek and Kevin Durant. Yeah, Durant, and who was the third one? Derrick Rose, yeah. Derrick Oh, Rose. Derrick Rose, oh. okay. So you you got some Quick leapers game. on that team. <laughs> you got some real yeah. leapers. It sounds like you're ready to go play for the Clippers with uh, Blake Griffin and DeAndre Jordan there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. So, that that, that team so actually probably probably might beat mine. I actually picked Jason Kidd, so you, <laughs> your, your, team, your team would probably Whoa. take mine out. In a t- <laughs> I needed a leader. I needed yeah, yeah, a leader. I definitely wouldn't pick uh, Jason Kidd if you play any volleyball. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ryan, uh, we're in the music here. We play a lot of tunes on the show. Uh, w- what's going on in your iPod right now? What's your favorite album of the summer? Well, I like J. Cole, Born Center, but Jay-Z TV was pretty good as well. Uh, uh, Holy Magna Carti, Holy Grail. Yeah. Yep, yep. But, I mean... but, but, but J. Cole TV is a lot better, though. Not you know, a lot better, but I like it a lot better. Jacob just flipped out when you said that. He loved yeah, that answer. I, 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 well, I wrote J. Cole before you answered it because I, I've done a lot of player interviews this off season, talking with a lot of the you know the younger players, the the, the college kids now going into the pros like Isaiah Cannon and and Jackie Carmichael who'll be joining us later, and uh, they both said J. Cole, and I got to tell you, I didn't listen to J. Cole until this last weekend, and now it's on my Spotify, you know playlist, so I'm listening to it on I, regular. I actually, uh, when I was in college not too long ago, quoted J. Cole in uh, one of my final papers in my English writing class. Oh, wow. That, that's a step up for I me. I did. Cool. <laughs> All right, now... Yeah, yeah, I can relate. <laughs> <laughs> now, we got a couple more uh, quick questions for you. What is your favorite summer cookout food? Uh, in Chicago? Anywhere. If you could have a, you know, a summer cookout food. Yeah, you got cookout. potato salad, you got chicken. What are we going with? Ribs. Uh, I'm going to have to go with the chicken. There you go. Can't that's, beat that's it. That's a good grill, hobby, too, for an athlete. Yeah. It has to be grilled. Grill, I mean, grilled you chicken. The, you got the barbecue out. You got to grill that. Got to stay in shape. And, uh, and yeah, finally, like uh, <laughs> finally, one last uh, fun question for you here, Ryan. Uh, if you weren't playing basketball, what could you see yourself doing as far as a career? Uh, that's Probably the hardest question uh, we have to answer. Yeah, when you're that focused on basketball, I bet it is tough. 
Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely dead focused on basketball right now. But I don't know. I, I, that's I really don't. I'm really not sure about them. But you know, probably something in business though. I, I would. I do. I, I dream of mine is to own a hotel. So oh. try to try to do something to get into that. So definitely business. There you go. Or maybe some sort of sports agent. You were pretty good at recruiting a volleyball team pretty quickly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be cool as well. Or, or maybe training or something like that. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, a lot of players have, you know, turned over the training and, and come up with some, you know, unique, fun systems that keep the body confused. And, and that seems to be the science these days. Confuse your body in the workout. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you get ripped and, you know, yeah, yeah. and the focus system, all those systems are great. Yeah, because I've been through so many workouts, I kind of picked up on a lot of it. So that would be, if it wasn't, if it's not into business, probably train other other younger kids to to help them accomplish their goals. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Well, Ryan, we can't thank you enough uh, for joining us, giving us some time today to discuss your journey throughout the basketball world. And uh, you know, I, I hope you land overseas, and I look forward to seeing you back in the NBA soon. Thank you. All right. Take care, Ryan. Right. Thank you, Ryan Allen, for joining us. Uh, of course, a uh, Chicago Bulls former player there and uh, a really, really great guy. I'm glad yeah. we got to talk to him. That was, was awesome. Great, yeah, great personality. Um, you know, easygoing kind of guy, and uh, just like his mother said in the interview, yeah. you know? And not even one mention of lactose intolerance. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, well, we did say if you listen to the podcast, you'd find out. So maybe later we have some time in between more guests. But, you know, we got to take a, a, a quick break here. We're going to call our next guest, which is Jackie Carmichael. Um you know him from the big guy who had seven blocks this summer in the yeah. summer league, and he also in had one game, of course, and one game, of course, and he also had a dunk situation where he was helping on the weak side, which we'll break down later on. I have a yeah. little mini rant on that. I, I yeah, I I want to uh, make sure he knows we support him in that, and we're see, I'm not the guy. I didn't go crazy when uh, DeAndre Jordan dunked on Brandon Knight. Uh, Brandon Knight was doing what he could. Yeah. Coming over to help out. I'm not that big on the the dunking on thing. I, no. I'm really not. He, yeah. What do you want? I think, to jump you're, out with, I think you're with me on that one. Yeah, I'm 100 with you on that. Yeah. It, it makes me. It's just, it's a casual fan who doesn't really understand the what right. goes what on is behind he supposed the game. To do? Just watch. Yeah, like exactly. everybody else, like a but fan. He's, quick, he's out there competing with quick Brandon Knight. No, he was traded to Milwaukee Bucks for Brandon yes. Jennings, and he has been announced the starter. So he went from backup on Detroit. To being announced as starter. Somebody else. Do they have Jeff Teague? Who is Jeff Teague? No, Jeff Teague is still in. He didn't go anywhere. He's still in Atlanta. Oh, really? I thought something happened. With no, him. no, no. My he's bad. still in Atlanta. Josh Smith's the one that went up to Detroit. Right. But they already announced that Brandon Knight's going to be a starter for the Milwaukee Bucks, which is great news for you, Brandon. I hope you, you know, resurrect, no pun intended, to dying on the yeah. court. Everyone, you know, buried you. But <laughs> that's that. And I really hope we didn't miss the first five minutes of us talking. It sounds like we might have. Probably. Because Ryan couldn't hear us, and hello, yeah. hello, hello. You fixed something. Yeah. Well, plug it in, plug it out. Yeah, we can, we can maybe I started edit, on South Park we can edit it down in post. Maybe. I started on South Park once. He unplugged the router, he plugged it back in. Right, it worked. And everything was back. Everything's back. So, all right, we're going to put you up with another commercial here, and we're going to give a friend of ours, Jackie Carmichael, a call. Mayhem is everywhere. I'm a basketball hoop in your driveway. I've been standing over your car since 1986. I used to spend every day getting pounded by your signature 30-foot bank shot and watching you not dunk. But after 25 years standing here in the rain and getting pelted by runny bird poop, I'm as rusty as you are. Now, if so much as a fly lands on me, I'm going down. And if you have cut rate insurance, you might have to pay for the damage to your car yourself. So get all state where agents keep you protected from mayhem like me. <laughs> Get the coverage you need and the discounts you deserve from an Allstate agent. Dollar for dollar, nobody protects you from mayhem like Allstate. Call your local agent, 1-888-ALLSTATE, or go to allstate.com. Savings and protection based on coverage selected and are subject to terms, conditions, and availability. Actual savings will vary. Allstate Property and Casualty Insurance Company, Northbrook, Illinois. And as promised, here we have our second guest of the podcast. We've got Mr. Jackie Carmichael, who played with the Dallas Mavericks in the Summer League. Also the Miami Heat. Also the Miami Heat. Hello, Jackie. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining us. And uh, we we really, uh, we we just had Ryan Allen on, who uh, was with the Bulls in the Summer League, and uh, you might be familiar with him. And the first thing we asked him, and I think we'll ask you as well, just because we really want to give fans uh, a a, a look into what it's like playing in the NBA Summer League. So, uh, Try to, can you walk us through like a day, uh, you know, playing in the summer league as far as, you know, 
watching video, getting ready for the games, and, and things of that nature? Yeah, um, I mean, as far as a normal day, I mean, we uh, we woke up in the morning and we, uh, you know, we'd, we'd have shoot around. Uh, we'd run through we'd run through different plays, and we'd run through things that were just, you know, we felt like uh, were were important things to touch on as far as being becoming NBA players or you know things that could help us, you know, go into uh, the next game because obviously it was tournament style, so you're doing scouting reports and stuff like that. But um, I think just getting mentally prepared was uh, the biggest thing that they stressed to us, you know, with mm. being in Las Vegas and everything. And, uh, I mean, it was it was a great experience. And, I mean, pretty much we played six games back-to-back. So, I mean, we didn't really have too much time to, uh, to go back to the drawing board. But, you know, the times we did, we really, you know, learned a lot. Now, the Summer League, and we were talking about this before any of the guests popped on, and as uh, Ryan joined us as well, we we discussed that, you know, when you're playing in the Summer League, especially in your case, Jackie, you're not only trying out for the team that added you to their roster, you're, you're essentially a free agent, and you're showing everybody what you can bring to the table. And so, you know, scouts overseas are looking at you, and, and NBA scouts are all 30 teams that they're looking at you. Um, so we want to ask you, how do you think you fared this year in the Summer League? Um and, and in in addition, you know, what what do you expect for you this uh, next couple of weeks? You know, are you expecting to get invited to any training camps, or um, are you going to take the path that Ryan's going to take and, and look for um, positions overseas? So talk to us a little bit about how you think you did this summer league and what the next step is to you. Um, I think uh, you know, as far as the, the summer league, I was I was able to go to Orlando, and um, you know, I thought Orlando went uh, went very well. Um, thought that I didn't really uh get a chance to to really get my feet wet and so i felt like once i got to vegas i was uh you know really given that that opportunity and um you know i just just took it uh it just just took the bull by the horns and it really uh attacked it so i felt like my so when i came out i felt like i showed a lot of my strengths uh, my rebounding ability you know my shooting ability my my uh you know willingness to, to get other players involved i feel and just a great character guy so I felt like, you know, a lot of teams uh, got to see those different things. And, you know, you know you're know, you not, like you said, you're not only playing for, uh, you know, to, to show the Dallas Mavericks what you have, but also, you know, the other 30 teams and then teams that are also overseas and may have interest in you. So I felt like I fared really well. I thought it was great competition. I love the uh, tournament style that uh, that, that the NBA summer, uh, summer League has gone to. So I felt like that was, you know, really beneficial to uh, to a lot of players. Yeah, it really brings that compete level up, which I think is important to show scouts. Ours is at a 10 right now. <laughs> I, I can go out there and, uh, you know, compete with the best of them. And speaking of that, uh, you, you had a lot – you had some really great games. Uh, there was that one, I believe it was against the Clippers. Uh, you had 23 points and nine rebounds and, you know, something like 35 minutes yeah. or maybe even less, actually. And uh, I, I actually saw that Mark Cuban said that you were uh, you were like a beast out there. Uh, so, it, you know, a couple things. A, how good did that feel to get out there and put up that type of performance? And, uh, you know, do, do you think that, you know, went a long way towards proving all those scouts and fans and everybody else that you belong to be playing with this NBA talent? Uh, definitely. I felt like, uh, I felt like, yeah, I felt like that was a, a big question mark with a lot of people was, you know, since I played in a, since I played in a, a mid-major, would I be able to, to keep up with the, with the pace and the, in the competition level? And I felt like I, Prove that and some with the games going forward. So, uh, you know, it was obviously great to hear Mark Cuban say those great things about me. And, you know, obviously that was a huge confidence booster going forward and, you know, definitely going in, you know, further into my career and hopefully becoming an NBA player, knowing that Mark Cuban thinks that, you know, that I did a great job and could and could play in that league. So, I mean, it was just great to, to hear that and to go out there and to put up that performance, I think, was uh, really, really helped me and really propelled me past, you know, kind of the stereotypes that, you know, people have labeled me with. Okay. Um, you know, you you had – you're probably one of the most storied players in Summer League and also a player who was – storied. Busy. Yeah, last year um, also got into a situation with you on the court, which James and I are going to come to your defense here because um, – and, and that's obviously the quote-unquote poster dunk – that Kent had on you um, in, yeah. in the game, yeah. <laughs> and and, J- and James and I look at this, and we say, you know, you got a weak side defender who is leaving his own man to help out a 
teammate who got blown by. So you're there to protect the rim and the paint, but you also got to protect the man. And, you know, if you're a second late, that happens to you. You can't get seven blocks yeah. in a game without contesting some guys. Yeah. So, you know, you did what you're yeah, supposed to do. You made true. an effort. <laughs> he was already in the air by the time you slid over. And I just think that fans yeah. kind of <laughs> fans blow these kind of dunks out of proportion. Was it a strong dunk? Absolutely. Was it a must dunk? <laughs> yeah. But did you, yeah. you know, did you get dunked on? No. A dunk on to me is like, you know, what Jordan did to Dikembe Mutombo after Dikembe <laughs> yeah. said, you've never dunked on me, you know. Um, he was there, he was set up, waiting. But, you know, coming over the weak side, there's not much you can really do about it. So kind of talk to us about that play from your point of view and, and what you saw in that play. Yeah, I mean, I think that they, uh, they were kind of trying to expose us on the uh, on the, the high uh, ball screen. And so, I mean, they were they were trying to get me off of – they were trying to get me off of the, my man – and then, you know, yeah, so sometimes in rotation, you know, there's just uh, there's miscommunication. And then, you know, uh, a guy like me who loves to block shots, you mm-hmm. know, uh, you can, first of all, you can't, be, you can't be afraid to get dunked on. And then second, or second of all, you just got, I mean, you got you to gotta go after it because at the end of the day, that you never know if that buck is going to determine the game. So, I mean, I felt, like it, I felt like it was a great dunk. I mean, I, I, was, like, I was like, man, that's, that's really – I was like, that's a great dunk. But while they're celebrating, I'm trying to run down the other end of the court and get a bucket. So, I mean, I felt, you know, you know hat off to, to Kent. You know, he, that, was, that was a heck of a dunk, and that was probably probably the most talked about. I, I, I've seen a, a couple things on Twitter about it with a that, with that chuckle that. But, yeah, you know, <laughs> top, blockers, uh, top blockers really can't be scared to get dunked on. Yeah, Sean Bradley never was. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, he was never scared. <laughs> well, no, and 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 uh, you also did have seven blocks in a game in a summer league game, which is very impressive because they're not you know you're not playing as many minutes as an NBA game. Can I catch up for one yeah, second? Sure. Yeah. So I was, I was reading I was reading comments, Jackie, on, on someone who wrote up I believe it was the ESPN article written up by Brian Gutierrez on uh, ESPN Dallas about this, about the seven blocks. And obviously some people sitting there saying, oh, great, it's a, it's a summer league game. And, and I thought some commenter had the best rebuttal to that. He said, he said go, go to your local YMCA and you try getting seven blocks in a game. I mean, yeah. I don't think I've ever gotten seven blocks in my entire career, let alone in a game. Not I. Even, even with the you know, same level type of competition, even playing with my friends. But, you know, and, and as the commenter pointed out, you are playing against NBA caliber players. I mean, everybody's there who is either – locked in on a roster or trying to make a roster and who will be playing professional yes. basketball somewhere. So, you know, for people who are trying to diminish your seven blocks, don't let them. Uh, it's still a, a great <laughs> to have. Even though you, well, you, can, you. you can't fall out in those games. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> now, when you were playing uh, with the Mavericks there in the summer league, did you actually get to meet Mark Cuban at all? I did. Um, right before I left, actually, um, I believe it was the final. I believe it was the final day. Um, actually, got to talk to him uh, briefly um, right after the practice. It got over with, and you know, was a great guy. I mean, just can't say enough great things about him. And you know, it, it's it's uh, it's no wonder why you know everyone in Dallas, you know, like Michael Finley, loves to come back because Mark Cuban is so, so great to his players. So. Well, it's a fantastic arena. As I said, I've been down there. It's uh, one of the better locker rooms Definitely. I've been in. Um, I will tell you one little inside note. I was a little disappointed last season because there was only one player who didn't have a trophy on their uh, on their locker down there, and it's Mr. Chris Kamen, which I'm very distraught about that. Everyone else had a photo of the trophy except for him, so he wasn't a team player last year for that roster. So if you end up on the if you end up on the roster, you might have to ask him, hey man, why didn't you have your yeah, trophy photo my, up? Well, now he's in the Lakers, so he oh, won't get yeah, the opportunity. Yeah, you're right, he's gone. So yeah. Everybody, you don't need him. Let him go to the Lakers. He doesn't, he doesn't want the trophy anyways. Um, but James and I, obviously, you know, we do our homework on this podcast, and we watched a lot of uh, you know, your summer league games and, and went back and watched some of the film on you prior to this uh, podcast here. And we noticed that you set some strong screens. And, and, I was you know, loving it. You know, oh, I was loving yeah. watching that tape. And, and James gets off to all those, <laughs> those you know, the little things you don't see. Well, I should say scout C and, and NBA junkie C, but fans don't see those kind of things. Um, unless you're watching Garnett and everyone just says it's a moving screen every time. But, you know, you set some really great screens and you do a lot of stuff away from the ball that's not that does not show up in the box score. Um, what part of your game do you think is your best attribute and which part do you think you need to work on a little bit more? Um, I would say definitely uh, my all-around defense. I feel like I'm one of those players that could, could play in the NBA and guard multiple positions, I think. I honestly think I'm very athletic at the on the defensive side and offensive side, but defensive side can guard two through five, and I feel like I'm strong enough and fast enough. But that's why I really pride myself on obviously shot blocking. But 
also being able to to set really hard screens, like you said, yeah. I feel like that's a that's a lost art of the game, and uh, that's like that. You know, I want to get my teammates open, and I feel like the more you do that, the more you can also get yourself open, and it just makes it really hard, uh, you know, for the for the defense. So I really feel like you know I'm a a great screener, and I feel like you know as I add as I add uh, you know weight and muscle, I feel like that's only going to get better. Yeah, and man, I I was I was watching that film, and Jacob knows I, I like those things, and I, I I couldn't get over it. You were laying dudes out with some of those screens, and I was yeah. losing, man. I I loved watching it, and that no, and and it's a great point because uh, you know it's such an important part of the game that doesn't get noticed. It, you know, in the end of the day, the the other guy gets the two points in the box score, but you were the one who got him open. Like you know, it, and and do you put as much pride into your your screen setting as, as I like to watch it? Uh, definitely. Uh, that's one thing that I've all that I've really focused on, especially coming into college. Uh, I feel like you know working on the pick and roll. I feel like that's uh, you know worked great for me. But yeah, screening. I've I've taken a lot of pride in that for sure. Now, um, you're the type of player that interests me in the league because we see a lot of guys at your body size, height, and weight either make it or don't make it. You know, you have the the extremes of Elton Brand, who was an All Star for a few years. Um, and then you got guys who come in for a couple of years and they're gone. So it, it's a tough situation being that six nine, six ten yeah. height, you know, because you, you're not a seven footer. Everyone loves seven footers. Don't give any scrub that's seven feet a contract. <laughs> right, like that one yeah. is gonna get him that, that advantage. <laughs> you know, especially a lot of foreigners just throw the money. Oh, you're seven feet. Come on over. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, you know, to me the most important part is wingspan, which you know you you have a, a, a decent sized wingspan and a, and as seven block shows that you know you can do that. So I, I want to ask you, um, what is your game plan now with you and your agent? Are, are you you guys going to see if you can wait for some training camp invites and, and, and hopefully make an NBA roster? Um, are you looking for the D-League or are you taking the, the, the approach to go overseas and get your money? Because we know the D-League, you don't get the same money as you do overseas. Um, you know, uh, right now we're kind of uh, we're, we're still in talks with, with a bunch of uh, different things. You know, uh, you know, obviously how Summer League went, you know, definitely, uh, you know, have a, have a few more options, but, you know, definitely looking to get into training camp. I uh, would love to stay in the States and, uh, be able to play for a team because I feel like I can contribute right away. I, you know, a very mature attitude and, you know, feel like, you know, even learning from, you know, some of the NBA grades on whichever team that may be, I feel like would be very, very beneficial to me. But I feel like, you know, also, you know, if overseas was, uh, you know, what was, what, what, what it came to, then I would feel great with that. I feel like I, you know, gain a lot of great experience over there and be able to come back next year and, you know, be even a better, stronger player than I was this year so I mean we're still we're still waiting to see but I think uh, you know hopefully I'll know by the end of this week for sure yeah that's great and, and I'm really hoping for you to get you look at a lot of the rosters out there and some of the guys that are on NBA rosters in the league and, like I I, I I have faith that you can get onto a roster I've seen your film but uh, just, just don't yeah. get too big time for us you know we, we expect to give us some inside information every now and again Hey, yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, and we, we just want to have a little fun here. We we actually we asked these same questions to uh, Ryan Allen, who was on just before this, and um, uh, we're, we're going to start with this one. And I don't know if you could beat his team because it was pretty good, but uh, we, we're okay. going to do this thing where uh, you are building a five-man volleyball team. Uh, you're one of the players, and now you need to pick four teammates for that volleyball team. Who you got in the NBA to to fill out that volleyball team? In the NBA, oh, I'm yep. definitely going. I'm definitely going. I'm definitely going with Chase Budinger because I know his Ooh. background. Uh, he was definitely. <laughs> I know that he was. A, he was a volleyball guy, yeah. player. Yeah, I know. I'm going with him. I'm going with. Uh, I feel like Kobe Bryant could be pretty solid. I think he. I think he's a, a master of anything. Guy. So I feel like he. I feel like he could play us too. Um, I would definitely go with Blake Griffin. I feel like I don't know for some reason. I feel understand. like he could jump in. Yeah, and be unreal. And then I feel like I would also go with um, – who else I go with? I think I would go with uh, one of the – I would go with Brooke, Brooke Lopez. Just, okay. put him in the, just put him in the center. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty good squad, too. Yeah, uh, Ryan Allen had Blake Griffin as well, and then he made fun of me because I had Jason Kidd on my team. <laughs> <laughs> Why was just Jason Kidd on your team? <laughs> <laughs> he said the same thing. <laughs> James took him for the leadership responsibilities and to bring the team together. There'll be no fighting over misplays or, you know, he keep everybody intact and he's hopeful for his coaching career. That's, that's, <laughs> um, very, that's very true. 
Now, now, Jackie, there's been a lot of great albums that come out this summer. Um, you know, you can go from anywhere from Jay-Z to Kanye, who dropped uh, an album this, this summer as well. You also got Mac Miller and, and everybody's fan favorite, which is J. Cole. Um, is there a particular album that you cannot stop listening to this summer? Um, particular album? Um, I'm definitely going to have to go with uh, the old... I'm definitely going to have to go with last year. I'm going to go with Kendrick Lamar. I've listened to, I've probably listened okay. to Kendrick Lamar's album, uh, Good Kid, Mad City, probably a million times. So I feel like that would probably be the album that I've listened to the most this summer, which is weird because I have Jay-Z's album, but I've only listened to probably one or two songs on there. Oh. Hey, you know, sometimes that happens. I mean, when he pays every radio station in the country to play his song <laughs> for an hour straight, I mean, yeah. he kind of shoving it down yeah, my throat. You don't need to pop in the disc yeah, to hear let, let me go to your album. Don't force it to me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, another uh, little summer-themed question here. Uh, of all the foods at the summer cookouts, which is one of my favorite things of the summer, uh, what, what's your favorite cookout food? Uh, I'm definitely going to go with bratwurst. That's probably oh, like the yeah. that's like the one big thing that that I look that I look forward to. And they got like the, all, the, all the new flavors and stuff now, so I, I really that's really uh, that's really what I like bratwurst. <laughs> you just made James day. I think he's tweeting or texting his friend about this. I love Brock. We're cut the same cloth. <laughs> All right, and, and, and our last, our last fun question for you, Jackie. And this one stumped Ryan, and it's probably going to stump everyone that we ask this question because of what you do for a living. Uh, but if you uh-huh. were not, if you were not playing basketball for a living, what could you see yourself doing? Uh, being a fashion designer. Whoa, that that was easy, nice and quick. That uh, do you have background yeah. in that area or? Yeah, that's that's actually what my degree is in, and what uh, what I uh, what I got my degree in. So I feel like I would, uh, you know, I feel like I'm pretty uh, fashion forward. So I feel like I'd be able to to be pretty successful at that. I like it. You know, so I gotta ask, um, have you become friends with Amari Sadama? I know he's got a clothing line out there, and uh, yep. you know, you should kind of get close to these guys. You know, maybe you end up in the Knicks and get some yeah. tips, from get some connections. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously, I, I see a lot of the guys in the NBA are, are starting to do that whole fashion thing. So hopefully, I'll be able to. To make some good connection and uh, and go from there. I got one last question for you just because we're on this topic. I wasn't expecting to hear that you want to be a fashion designer, but um, who do you think is the best dressed NBA player in the post game conferences? Russell. <laughs> yep. Oh, best dress? I'm gonna have to go with uh, just from what I've seen. I- I'm gonna definitely gonna have to go with LeBron. Okay. Okay. You know, I'm glad you didn't say Dwayne Wade because I think his fashionable choices have been very questionable, especially wearing the <laughs> short pants. I should not see a man's ankles yeah, the, when you're wearing pants. Yeah, the suit, the suit capris. Uh, I've heard, uh, <laughs> I heard that was a mistake. I heard that was a mistake, and he just made it work. When I was with the Miami Heat, I, I kind of heard a story about. I kind of heard a story about that, so it was pretty funny. Whoa. Okay, so so he had he had planned to wear actual pants, but someone gave him those shorts, and he said, "You know what? I'm just gonna rock this and rock the hell out of it." Exactly. Exactly. Honestly, from, honestly, what, from what from what I've heard. When you're dating Gabrielle Union, I, I'd wear whatever I want. There you go. And, and that's like, it's, <laughs> yes. I hate to stay on the style thing. I know you've, you've got things you probably have to do, but if you're out there in the summer, do you go with sandals, flip flops, or boat shoes? <laughs> do I, if I go, do I go with what? Uh, it's sandals, flip flops, or boat shoes. Uh, man, that's the only three choices. <laughs> Or sneakers, if you want. <laughs> I would, I would definitely, I would definitely probably have to go with. Uh, I'll probably have to go with some Birkenstocks, more like that. Is that are both? I'm kind of torn. I like it. I love it. All right. Well, thank you, Jackie Carmine. That's for why joining he's a fashion us. designer, not a. Exactly. And we don't even know uh, the top three things to be wearing. So, <laughs> <laughs> Jackie, we can't thank you enough, and uh, you know we look forward to seeing uh, what happens with you in the next couple of weeks. We'll be following along. Yeah, you'll be on a team. And, we'll uh, be watching you play. Absolutely. So, Jackie, right. thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. Appreciate it. Talk to you guys later. All right, take care. See you later. That, yeah, of bye. course, was Jackie Carmichael. He played in the Summer League for the Mavericks and the Heat. And the Heat. And uh, I believe, Jacob, we have our third guest right right, just going back-to-back, one to the other. We're, no we're, stop. we're just running right through this. And here is Isaiah Cannon, who was drafted by the Rockets in the second round. And um, we've got to say thank you for joining us. You just follow up Ryan Allen and Jackie Carmichael, and we're going to talk a little bit of Summer League. How are you doing today, Isaiah? I'm doing pretty good. How about yourself? We're fantastic out here. And uh, I just want to start with this because we, 
Um, you, you might not have been listening, but for the listeners who have been, we just talked to Ryan Allen, who, you know, he, he's been in the league and now he's, you know, trying to get back. And then we have Jackie Carmichael who played in the summer league and he's not quite on a team yet, but uh, you're a guy who's drafted. You're, you're definitely on a team. You've met the players. Uh, ha- have any advice for those guys to, to, to possibly get into the league uh, this season, hopefully? Man, just, I mean, I, the only advice I can say is just keep grinding. I mean, you know, worked hard to get to this point, and anything is possible. Just keep praying every day, and uh, God got a plan, a different route for everybody. So uh, never hold your head or give up on your dream, and eventually it happens. And uh, I was thankful enough and blessed enough to mind having this year and this year's draft. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited and uh, getting ready every day mentally. Uh, and getting ready every day. You, you know, Jackie, you probably just said the, the code word for our podcast, and that's anything's possible. We're Boston guys, so everybody knows that Kevin Garnett commercial after they won the title. And uh, anything possible has become a coined phrase in the Boston area after that. But, no, you, you said something there talking about the draft and being blessed. And I spoke to you prior to the draft, and, you know, that that's obviously a stressful time. You don't really know where you're going to go. You're, you're just hoping for the best, and it's kind of out of your hands. Now that that experience has passed you, and you're now a member of the Houston Rockets, um, looking back at it, can you talk a little bit about the experience and, and like where were you when you got the call and, and your reaction, your family's reaction, um, and just kind of what was going on that day on, on draft night? Oh, man, it was uh, – that whole day was, was nerve-wracking. Um, I was woke up and just like, hey, this is the day I've been dreaming about and been waiting for, and mm-hmm. uh, it's finally here. I actually went in. Went to the gym, tried to clear my mind, just going there and uh, did a workout with my agent and uh, just tried not to, to think about it so much. I was actually at home with family and friends, so um, I got a chance to, to experience that time with them. And, uh, I mean, once the, once the drive got ready to come on, I mean, the nerves set in. But at the same time, I was I was excited and uh, I knew God would put me in the right position, uh, regardless of what team it was or what pick it was. and I was just looking forward to just seeing my name called. And like I say, I was blessed and thankful enough to be able to uh, experience that. So, I mean, it all worked out for the best. And so often now, when we're watching the draft as fans, like Jacob and I are, uh, it, usually the, the players are starting to know now before David Stern or, 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 or his replacement, uh, Silver, over. Silver, come out and, and announce it now. Did did you get a call from the Rockets before they drafted you? Did you know that was going to happen, or or how did you learn about uh, about being drafted? Well, I I knew about because uh, I was seeing it as the draft was going on that uh, people was releasing the picks before then. But uh, mm-hmm. I had people that was sitting next to me. I told them I said, uh, "Don't tell me. I don't want to know." Uh, <laughs> my agent, my agent actually called me um, right before they picked me, so. Um, other than other than him telling me, I, I had no idea, and like I say, I didn't have no workout uh, with with the Rockets. So all I was going off of was the, the interview that I had with them at the combine. So, um, but I knew that, I knew they was high on me, and um, I knew they really liked me. So uh, it all worked out for the best, and I'm excited to be part of the Rockets. Especially we got James Harden, not a big big guy, Dwight, and uh, a lot of great younger guys around around them too, so uh, we definitely going to be uh, a team to, to look out for. So uh, I'm just looking forward to getting out there and, and competing with my team. You know, and, and it's funny because I actually uh, spoken with Chandler Parsons and interviewed him his rookie season, the same thing I did with you going through your agency. Um, it, it's a great way to build connections. Um, but you had a minor setback this uh this off season and doing a little workout and you had a high ankle sprain. Um, so it prevented right. you from participating in the summer league. Um, but were you able to go to summer league and be with your teams or did the Houston Rockets kind of keep you back in Houston to, uh, you know, rehab your ankle and work out with the team? No, I, I went, I went down there with the team. And, uh, like I say, I was working hard every morning, uh, trying to get back so I can at least get a couple games in while I was down there. And this is actually my first, um, major injury to, to have me out of anything um, in four years. So um, I didn't know how to take it, and it was very stressful just sitting over there not being able to compete with my teammates. But uh, at the same time, I got a chance to learn a lot. Uh, I got a chance to see the game up close and personal and um, just be able to, to look at it and, and learn that way instead of just being thrown out there in the fire and learning 
from your mistakes. So I feel like I got a little edge um, with with then some of the guys because I got a chance to sit on the side and and watch and and uh, pick up little things, what to do and what not to do. And uh, I mean, I, I'm a competitor, so I was I was fighting trying to get back out there and play with them. And and uh, but at the same time, your health come first. And I knew I had plenty more games to play with with 82 season. So um, I mean, I'm just looking forward to getting back out there on the court. And playing. Yeah, you know, and I spoke to you prior um, in, in, to the draft, and and one of the things you spoke about is why you chose Murray State, and and to me that tells a lot about your character, Isaiah. That tells me that you know you, the people that are loyal to you, you're going to return that loyalty back to them, and it, I, I kind of see that what you're doing with the Rockets, you know, you're not going to try to risk yourself playing in some league. You're going to give them everything you got. You're going to rehab. But I did want to make a comment on something that you said because you said you weren't you you weren't worked out by the Houston Rockets, and to me. It, I, I think a lot of workouts are kind of smoke screens because everyone's trying to say, I don't like this player, and we'll take you, for example. The Rockets are like, yeah, you know, we're not going to work out Isaiah Cannon. You know, we might not get him. We don't really. Right, and then they swoop in yeah, in front of the team that did you. work him out. Yeah, <laughs> so, like, it, it seems like people who work out for teams, they don't get drafted by those teams because it's all smoke screens and, and you know. Strategy. Some, yeah, because you don't want to give away who you want in the draft, and every team has something different. So I just thought that was interesting that you point that out, that you didn't work out for the Rockets, and, you know, you, you went down to the Combine, and obviously you spoke with personnel there, but um, at the end of the day, you know, you, you didn't have a Ended up workout. in a pretty good spot. Yeah, you know, you're, <laughs> you're on a team that a lot of people are predicting to at least make it to the Western Conference Finals. Uh, but uh, my, next question, my next question for you is uh, what role do you see playing on this team? Uh, you know, they got Jeremy Lin, and they, obviously they have Patrick Beverly, who uh, kind of busted out last year in the playoffs for them. Uh, more notably for taking out Russell Westbrook, but he still he played, played well great. Too, he yeah. still played great. Uh, so where do you see your role on this team uh, as essentially the second or third point guard, depending on how camps work out? Uh, I mean, I I see myself uh, just talking to the staff. Uh, they just want me to come in and and play my game, do what I do well. Uh, they like shooting threes, and and I mean, throughout my career, I was able to shoot threes at a at a high rate. So uh, I'm just gonna continue to better myself overall, and whatever they ask me to do, I'm all for it. Uh, I'm just trying to win, and like I say, we got a good shot of of, of winning at a high level. Uh, with the type of guys and the type of team we have this year. So uh, whatever they're asking me to do, I feel like I'll be able to, to do it. And like I say, I'm just looking forward to winning. Well, you bring up shooting threes. And I'll tell you one thing about your game from the tape that I've seen. You're not going to have any trouble uh, transitioning from the college three-point line to the NBA three-point line because you're pulling them up from like 30 feet on some of the ones I see. Dude, you're just bombing and nailing them. I love it. Uh, tell me a little bit about uh, your range, and you know, I, I don't think there's going to be much transition. Do you? No, nah, I don't. I don't think so. <laughs> I mean, I never really paid attention to it when in college when I had to uh, when I was shooting them. But I mean, I, I work I work on them every day. Uh, so I mean, I don't think it'd be that big of a transition. But <laughs> at the same time, you can never be too satisfied with how well you shoot. So I'm always looking for ways to, to get better and. Uh, to be able to continue to shoot at a high rate. The way that you pulled up for, for some of those long threes in the video that I've seen uh, kind of reminded me of uh, Jimmer Fredette, actually, uh, when he was in college and sort of bombing away. Uh, what, what NBA player uh, w- would you sort of model your game after? And this could be a, a, a current player or a past. Uh, I think I got a, a lot of similarities to uh, Chris Paul, uh, just with the type of player he is. Uh, on the court and off the court, and uh, we're very similar in size, and um, he does a lot of things that I I feel like I can do. He can pass the ball extremely well. Um, He scores the ball when he has to, and um, he's a leader, and everybody loves playing with him, and as a point guard, that's what you you would want to do, and I feel like I have all those characteristics to be able to do those same type of things and to do it at a high level, and uh, a lot of people compare me to this year's Damian Damian Lillard. So, I mean, who knows? I I'm my own player, and um, I'm trying to be better than both uh, one day. So there you go. Uh, who knows? Yeah, and and when that day comes, I'm sure Damian will ask you to pick up the tab because I know you guys are good <laughs> friends. Uh, but no, Isaiah, you know you know what I like you, about you as a player, I should say, about your size because. 
point guards can range from, you know, we've seen short guys as in Earl Boykins in the 5'6s and in the 5'7s to, you know, tall point guards in the 6'6s or even Sean Livingston 6'9". But I don't judge the height of a point guard. I judge, I judge the bulk. And that's why I like that you compare yourself to Chris Paul because, you know, I can't remember ever seeing Chris Paul jump. I mean, he, he kind of stays on the ground. He, he, he uses the court to his advantage. He uses his lowest center to gravity, gravity to an advantage. And I kind of see that in you because you're, you're a stronger player. You're, you're, you're more bulky as a point guard. And then it doesn't harness your, your speed or quickness, which is a, a bonus, and that's why you're in the NBA. Um, but I want to ask, you know, what has the coaching staff down in Houston kind of asked you to improve on this offseason and, and coming into training camp? And, 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 you know, what are they looking for out of you as a player? Uh, just really just to improve myself uh, in every aspect of my game, uh, get smarter, uh, learn the game, and uh, just the biggest thing, just come in and compete. Um, they don't want me to come in and, and just be at all, just the people that's around me. They want me to come in and compete and to show that I belong there. And I mean, they're very high on me, and I mean, I'm, I set high expectations on myself. And at the same time, like I say, I'm just trying to do whatever I can to help the team win and um, that's what my role is going to be. Whatever they ask me to do, I'm going to do it. And, uh, I'm just looking forward to getting out there and, and competing and trying to wheel my way on, on the court. So, Yeah, it's a good outlook. And uh, and, and actually, Jacob and I are uh, we are Boston guys. Uh, we, we grew up in Massachusetts. So although we're too young to, to have seen him play, uh, Kevin McHale is a bit of a, a, a semi-god to us. Um, the, have you gotten a chance to meet Coach McHale yet, and uh, has he given you any advice uh, on this upcoming season? Oh yeah, he came down to summer league with us, and uh, I mean he was he was just telling me uh, just certain things um, that he like about me, at my game, and um, how he look at as us as a team, and some of his philosophies. And uh, like I said, he's a he's a he's a good coach, and he was a great player. So uh, with all the tools we got, and and I'm sure he's gonna come up with a strategy to, to make us win at a high level. And uh, I'm just looking forward to being able to play under a, a great player and a great coach. And, you know, he, he's not a yell in your face kind of coach. And I think, I think NBA players adapt to that a little bit better than the kind of college mentality, kind of yelling at young men or yeah. kids in some cases to, to do certain things. At the NBA level, you all know how to play the game. You, you know, you all know what you're supposed to do. And when you know you're not doing it, you're having someone screaming in your ear time and time again. And, and Mikhail's kind of that different – he's kind of a laid-back kind of character. And obviously we saw the situation last year, the very emotional situation with Garnett and, and yeah, Mikhail yeah, yeah, hugging yeah. and, and uh, you know, obviously the, the, the loss of his daughter. Yeah, we're not trying to get into that. But, um, you know, Mikhail just has a ton of respect all around. And uh, so – but I want to transition this to the, the city of Houston and kind of texted you a little earlier today. Um, I lived down in Houston for two years, and I know you've been down there working and training and, and get situated, getting yourself a living place and kind of seen the city and seen the facilities. And uh, um, I kind of just want to take your opinion on Houston. Have you found some good restaurants you like down there? Are you enjoying the city? Is there enough off-the-court things for you to do to uh, enjoy yourself? And, uh, and just how are you liking the experience down in Houston so far? Oh, yeah, it's definitely a, a big city. And uh, a great place to live. I'm from the South anyway, so uh, I'm sure I won't be too too amazed at the humidity down there. I'll be pretty <laughs> used to it. But, uh, I mean, it's, it's, like I said, it's a great city. It's a great city. It's full of energy, and um, there's a lot of people down there that, that are Houston Rockets fans. And I'm um, looking forward to getting out there and, and establishing um, my place of residency and, um, and finally be able to, to have my own place to live in. <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, you go from college dorm to living in hopefully a house or condo, something that, you know, everyone wishes they can afford. But I can relate. I, I, we're all there. We're all there. <laughs> uh, hey, he's a new homeowner right next to me. Um, but I do got to give you one piece of, I got one piece of advice to you because I've never had – I'm from up north, so obviously country cooking. I never had the home country cooking. So I had to rely on the restaurants. But there's a, there's a, a few restaurants down in the Houston area called Kelly's, and it was started by a Houston police officer. So if you have a chance to go to right. any place called Kelly's with an EY – Unbelievable country cooking. I probably have you already been. Pounds. Have you ever already been there? No, I haven't been there. Well, I hope hope someone tells you about it. It's a nice little, you know, kind of hole in the wall. It's like six locations around Houston, but it's phenomenal food. But uh, no, I love my time down in Houston. But the humidity was a little of a cultural shock to me, uh, being in the Northeast where I'm used to seeing snow in the ground six, seven months of the year, <laughs> and then I'm lucky to get a month of summer. Uh, I most definitely have to uh, try to look that up on my GPS and find it. 
There you go. And uh, just real quick before we get to the fun stuff, because we do have some fun uh, questions planned, but let's talk Rockets here for a second. Uh, you add Dwight Howard in the offseason. Uh, James Harden emerges last season as a top five scorer in the league. Chandler Parsons has an amazing season. Uh, where do you see the expectations of this team? And uh, do you think that it's a championship contender? Uh, I mean, I see it as a, a championship contender for sure. Um, and, I mean, with all those players that we have now with James Harden and Chandler Parsons, uh, Dwight Howard, um, I mean, it's, it's it's amazing to be able to play alongside of them my first year in the NBA. And, uh, like I say, I definitely see us as, as contenders. And um, we're we're definitely all preparing to, to go out there and win it. So, uh, I mean, this year the expectations, I'm sure they're going to be um, high because we're going to set them high on ourselves. And um, we're just looking to, looking forward to going out there and just competing uh, the base, best way we can and uh, playing together and going out there trying to win it for the city of Houston. It's been a long time for them, but, hey, at least they have a couple of titles. I know there's some cities around the country that <laughs> – don't have any titles, and they have no idea what it's like to win a title. Um, but we're going to have some fun, have some fun questions here, um, sort of related to basketball, but not really. And James and I had a podcast last week where we kind of discussed summer-themed, but brought the NBA into it. And one of the questions that got a lot of feedback from people on Twitter, and they loved answering it. And, and the other guys in this, this podcast had enjoyed fun it with too. this one oh, as well. Oh, yeah. So Ryan, <laughs> Ryan Allen and uh, Jackie Carmichael enjoyed answering it as well, so I'm sure you will. Um, you are having a volleyball game, and you need to pick four players to join you on a volleyball team. Four other NBA players. Four other NBA players. Which four players do you select? Uh, let's see. All right, probably LeBron, Durant, and include myself or just four? You, you, you and four, so it's five total. Five total, you're one All of them, right. you got four other guys. LeBron, Durant, probably uh, DeAndre Jordan, and probably Blake Griffin. <laughs> wow, Whoa. that is really similar. To, all right, Blake Griffin made it on all three of you guys' teams. There's something and, we don't know. And DeAndre Jordan was on uh, Ryan Allen's team as well. Wow. So that's him. And I think LeBron was on another one too. So, but these are the guys. Like they're they're athletic dudes. They're competitive guys. And uh, I mean, that's obviously going to be a, a dirty uh, volleyball team. And just so you know, right, I may right. I may tell Damian Lillard you did not pick him to play volleyball. <laughs> I don't know how he's going to feel. About <laughs> <laughs> All right, next next uh, question on the fun slate here. Uh, we, we've been talking a lot about music with these two other uh, guests that we had. What's your favorite album of this summer? Uh, right now it's J. Cole, Born Center. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, and that was, uh, I mean, that was also what, right that's now. Really, that's really what I'm, what, I'm, what I'm bumping right now. And it's a, it's a damn good album. i got to admit, I just listened to it last week, and... Uh, I became a fan after doing a lot of one-on-one interviews. Everyone said Jay Cole and never gave him a shot. So uh, I did, and I have no regrets. So I got to thank you and everybody else who's kind of turned me on to Jay Cole there. Now, the next question is about food, and we all love food. Um, what is your favorite summer cookout food? Uh, summer cookout, uh, probably some ribs. I love uh, eating ribs, and but I'm a seafood type of guy, so any type of oh. seafood, uh, I'm always down for it, so... Uh, Some I mean, salmon can... and mashed potatoes. <laughs> oh yeah, salmon for <laughs> sure. And, uh, well, any well, type from, of uh, any type of fish, really. That was from uh, Tony Allen's famous game, where as I guess Ryan Allen knew much better than we did. It was against yeah. Denver. We put up thirty <laughs> points, and in the post game conference, they asked him, uh, you know, what did he have for his pregame meal? And Tony said, salmon and mashed potatoes, not salmon, but salmon. <laughs> and uh, Ryan gave him some uh, some laughs with that. Right, right. And finally. Isaiah, we are uh, we're sort of exploring what what players may do if they weren't in the NBA. Now you you've got drafted, you've got your dream job, you're an NBA basketball player. But if you weren't playing basketball, what's another profession you could see yourself succeeding in? Professional fisherman. There you go. Loves fish. Whoa. <laughs> I will say I went, I went I'm fishing. A, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a down I'm a down south south guy, and I was born around the ocean, so. And I love fishing. That's one of my hobbies I do when I try to do right. when I'm a free. So uh, I try to find an occupation in that. Bass or, or deep sea fishing? Uh, probably um, deep sea, deep sea uh, salt water. 
and it's different. You, know, you never know what you're going to catch out there in the ocean. And, and in the freshwater, you know pretty much what you're going to catch. So saltwater fishing is more challenging than uh, and it's more fun than, than it would be freshwater. But fishing is fishing. I like both. But if I had to pick, I'd do deep, deep sea fishing. What's the biggest fish you ever caught? Uh, probably a redfish. Okay. You had, you had a height on that thing? Uh, I can't remember. It was a while ago. You stuff it at least? You have it on your wall? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we ate that. <laughs> <laughs> that that's probably yeah. even better. That's even yeah. better. Guy likes seafood. You of know, course he's going to eat the fish. You taught me on that. Uh, but Isaiah, we can't thank yeah, you we... enough. And, and uh, you know, we look forward to seeing you this upcoming season with the Houston Rockets. And, uh, we, you know, we know you're going to have a great season. Yeah. You have a lot to learn. It's a little dry out there in Texas. I hope you find somewhere where you can fish. All right. I, you know I will. You know I will. I'll probably tweet. <laughs> Tweet something soon. <laughs> you, be, right. you better catch a fish larger than Vladimir Putin, the, the president of Russia, just tweeted out last week. Whoa. He had a big fish. All right, but, I got it. They also got meat <laughs> waters up in, up in Russia. So. All right, well, you'll, you'll give him a run for his money. Thank you very much, Isaiah Cannon, for joining, and uh, we hope to have you on soon maybe to uh, – we do we always do previews of uh, of each team in the NBA, so so maybe you can join us for that. All right, in time, just uh, hit me up. You know how to find me. We All do. Right, we well, thank it. you so much, Isaiah. All right, no problem. All right, of course, that is Isaiah Cannon of the Houston Rockets. And uh, much like a lot of people, he has a pretty high outlook for the Rockets this season. And yeah, they should. I don't blame him at all. I, you look at the team that they've got there now, and, and they really came on last season when they brought in James Harden and that great trade with Oklahoma well, City that I'm sure they're regretting. And, if people have been following our careers in the basketball media world, they know you and I have been picking 60-win seasons for the Rockets. Well, that, except that's last year. That but, wasn't for any of the uh, the current players no. on the team. I was a big Yao Ming guy. Who did you see the picture of uh, him with Manny Pacquiao? No, I saw one of him with a four eleven girl though. Oh no, there was one. Yeah, Manny Pacquiao was uh, not quite as tall as Yao Ming. News flash. Not, not as tall as Yao. No, no, but it's funny. It it's funny because Yao's like he. It, it's almost like Yao doesn't know he's having his picture taken. He's just got sort of looking off into the distance. Well, it's I will beautiful. say. T Mac tweeted the other day in Instagram photos of him and Yao Ming saw by to visit T Mac and his family, which was kind of fun. And uh, as you pull up the Manny Pacquiao, oh, he's not ready for that photo. <laughs> he's looking down like, what's everybody down there doing? Who's this little guy? Who's this little guy? Pacquiao's having a ball. Who'd win in a fight? Yao Ming. Yao Ming, you think so? You think Manny Pacquiao can hurt <laughs> Yao Ming? No well, he's way. got like cute. But... Look, okay. Um, I understand the size of his fist. He's qu- he's quick. He's got quick hands. And he's pretty much arm level with Yao Ming's groin Let me area. Ask you this. Do you think Yao's gonna be quick enough to cover his groin before Manny Pacquiao First off, Yao's, it? Yao's gonna wear a cup. Second of all, Yao had to push <laughs> Shaquille O'Neal around. That's true. Do you think Pacquiao can hurt Shaq? Well, it, it, maybe. I, again, no. I go back no. to the ball. <laughs> Could he hurt Mike Tyson? No. Well, that's a different story. Okay, that's a different. Well, who kind would of fight. fight, Mike Tyson or Shaq? Mike Tyson. I pick Shaq. I don't think so. I got Shaq. Because, see, I don't think Shaq could keep, well, are we it's talking, a fight. Not are we talking today? today? Are we talking today? Are we talking in... If we do primes, I'm with you on Mike. Okay. Because Shaq's never had a prime right, physique. Well, well, see, now Tyson's not as quick, but if he was... How do we end up on this topic? <laughs> <laughs> I blame Yao Ming. Yeah, it's all Yao Ming's fault. Anyways, Yao Ming was hanging out with T-Mac, and yeah, same thing. T-Mac took a photo of his daughter with Yao Ming in the photo, and you did not see Yao Ming's upper body. <laughs> <laughs> it was just the torso. It's the Great Wall. Yeah, so we got to thank all our guests tonight. We yeah. had Ryan Allen from the Chicago Bulls Summer League on with us, who's looking to go overseas, hoping to get to Israel. We had Jackie Carmichael, who played for the Miami Heat and Dallas Mavericks Summer League teams, who is hoping to get a training camp offer. If not, obviously, he, as he pointed out, he's got a lot of offers on the table around, you know, D League Summer uh, overseas, maybe get a training camp. And then lastly, we got to thank Isaiah Cannon for joining us, who is on the Rockets roster, has signed a contract, second yep. round draft pick. And they have a very bright future ahead of them. Yeah, Rock's going to look good. He looks good. And uh, we'll look forward to speaking to you next week. Um, I'm sure everybody enjoyed this podcast, listened to some of the, you know, the up-and-coming players. Hopefully we see them in the NBA. I know we're going to see Isaiah, but uh, I-, I hope those other two guys make it as well. And uh, I'm sure all our listeners will appreciate you know, hearing this and then getting to see the player later in the uh, future. Absolutely. It's going to be exciting. So, everybody, thank you for listening, and take care. Yep.
You just listen to NBA Unplugged. Brought to you by the ProBasketballTalk.com. But it's 